Today on the Uniweb Interview Show, I'm joined by Andrew McDonald, author of Punishment and Good Deeds. Andrew, <laughs> how's it going, buddy? Dude, it is just an absolute blast down here in Florida, man. We were enjoying the fun in the sun. I'm coming yeah. off a manic, manic Sunday night into Monday morning. Things are insane. But that's all right. We're doing good, man. We're doing good. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing really well. I'm so excited to talk to you again. It's been it's been like what three months since the last time we interviewed, yeah, I guess. That. And a lot's transpired in that time. Kind of. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> a lot has transpired on your end. I know, man. I, I've been looking at these uh, book um, reviews, not the reviews, the trailers. The, yeah. The trailers you're doing, man. They are awesome. They are oh, awesome. Thank and you. The interviews you've been doing. You're fantastic, man. I, I, if I had half your energy, man, I'd be I'd probably be rich by now. I wish I still had half my energy. I gave, <laughs> <laughs> I gave it. Yeah, all you've been using a lot of it. <laughs> I was like, this is an endless supply. I'm sure of it. <laughs> now I'm just like, mm-hmm. I can't wait to take a nap. Few things oh. are truly eternal, my friend. I know, right? But you have a lot of cool stuff going on, like. Uh, Punishment and Good Deeds. I, I read the book. I love the book. Gave it a, a, a review that everyone can check out on Amazon on Goodreads. Um, it's a fantastic book. Literally, like it, it did. It did things for me in literature that I haven't seen done before. In terms of when we were talking about this just a minute ago, how you give each character such a well fleshed out backstory that there's you're able to empathize with every single one of them or, or and feel. And understand why they're making the choices they make, and you don't see that very often. I mean, there there is a lot of character building, obviously, in in other stories. But what I saw you do was take like a character, um, like the albino, for instance. Uh, My in buddy Albert. Yeah, Albert. Al- and he <laughs> was like a he was like a terrible, terrible person. But you gave him a backstory, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> I understand where he broke. You know, and you get you you see exactly where he broke, and then you're like, I don't like what he's doing. It doesn't justify him being a maniac, but you see where it happens, and then because that is so, uh, it, it's just how hu- hum, uh, human nature works. It's like that happens for all of us. There are things that sometimes we just can't deal with, and we break, and it takes us down the path that w- where we go. And, you know, it's not always the best path, but you can see where the fork in the road is. And that's and that was something that was really amazing to see for me. Um, and you have you have uh, radio interviews coming up. You've got uh, you got your book. It's in Barnes and Noble now. Well, at least here locally anyway. <laughs> got to contact Local, yeah. <laughs> But let's talk about that journey, man. So, um What's been going on with you? What do you What have you been doing to get your book well, out? Um, as far as getting my book out there, I, I, like you said, I have been hustling. I've joined a, a local writers group, the Space Coast Writers Guild, down here in uh, Central Florida, Brevard County, which mm-hmm. is quite interesting. Uh, first meeting I went to, they put out a lot of good good information that put me in touch with some people. That's how I got hold of the lady that I'm doing the radio interview with which uh, that's going to be on May 20th. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time down here where I'm at. And it's Viewpoint with, with CETA and Friends, which if anybody wants to look it up online, because I know most people aren't local, they can look that up at uh, 1510wbc.com. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. working on, I've got a radio interview coming up. And then um, also after going down and speaking with people at the local Barnes and Noble here in West Melbourne, Florida, and getting and a very, very nice lady, actually, she put my book on the shelf for me, you know, ordered a few, about six copies, so it's, it's sitting there, <laughs> we'll see if any bought, but then I spoke, I asked her about the possibility of doing a signing, which she was willing to entertain the idea, and that, that signing will be on the afternoon of Saturday, June 8th, and that's at the... Hey. Yep, June 8th. Saturday, June 8th. At, uh, it'll be in the afternoon. I have to find out if you know if it's 1, 2 o'clock, something like that. i got to be there. But um, whew, wake up. 
train of thought derailed. <laughs> Yeah, that Barnes and Noble. If anybody is local listening to this, that's right across from Melbourne Square Mall on Highway 192 in West Melbourne, Florida. Okay. So, uh, so other than that, I mean, Facebook, Twitter, you know, just and just doing what I can. You're hustling though, and I I think it's uh, did did something because your book's been out for how long now? Uh, well, the Punch current rendition. That I went through page publishing so I could get it in actual print mm-hmm. uh, was actually put out the uh, May of last year in actuality. But it took May me quite a while to figure out how to what what to even begin doing, to be honest. Yeah. So maybe as far as you know, getting word out, you know, I think the last six months or so, I guess I've been working on that. But it's been out for almost a year. But it's I, I I feel like what you're doing now is so important because it shows that you believe in this book. Um, I know it's a great book. You know it's a great book. And now the energy is starting to be put behind it to tell other people why it's a great book. Why should why should anybody else go read Punishment and Good Deeds? Well, I mean, if you if you like thrillers or that kind of stuff, I I truly did like you said. I I tried to put real people into it. I, I wanted a story not about some guy out there, you know, saving the world from nuclear threats. So I, don't, I, wanted, I wanted something closer to home where people could relate to the characters. This, this is a man who's gotten caught up in a, in a fight he didn't ask for against yeah. the forces of organized crime, such as it is. And all he really wants to do is to keep his family and friends safe. He didn't, he didn't want this to happen. And he got roped into it by doing what was, in essence, a good deed in the first place when he tried to stop a mugging. But I, I think people would like it because it is relatable. The characters are real. It's not something that's all high technology and, you know, and, and saving gold. It's something that you, you and I could look at and say, I could see that. Yeah. You know, that, that could happen. That could happen to me. All right. So. I hope to God it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, let's I don't think I'd be able to handle it as well as my character did, mind you. But <laughs> that's right. You're not a karate master like he is. No, no, he, he's got a couple of belts on me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, <laughs> my my belts equate to uh, let's make another notch after dinner tonight. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. So, Thomas Mazuko. Thomas Mazuko is the main character. Yes. Tell me, tell me about him. Well, he was uh, in the Air Force. He's recently retired. And all he really wanted to do was open up a karate studio and pass on his knowledge and experience to young people and such, you know, and enjoy life with his wife and his, and his kid. Well, at the beginning of the book, he has one kid. There is a second child before, before the book is over. But, yeah, he's just, he's, he's just a normal guy, you know. And but he's he's loyal with absolute fault. And yeah, you know, while you while he'll take some pushing, you can only push so far before he pushes back. But there is definitely a huge compromise ability in his mind. He's, you know, he's not he's not all out, you know, gung ho, I wanna kill I wanna kill everybody out there. You, yeah. you, if you read the book, you'll see a huge compromise that he makes that actually uh, causes a an issue for three years of his life <laughs> yeah. before a lot of the real before a lot of the real violence actually happens. Right. But, but you know he's just he's just you know the everyday guy who gets caught up in a bad situation and and does the does the best he can to to resolve it while trying to protect his family, friends, and you know those he cares about and do the right thing. Yeah. So what does what does the book mean to you? I mean, I, I ask this question a lot of people. Um, you know, we we do. I feel like we discover a lot as we write fiction. Um, what is what is what does punishment and good deeds mean to you? Well, it, I, I spent a lot of time working on this book. Yeah, but but books books in general have have seen me through a lot of tough times. I, we went over a little bit of that in the, in my first interview. Yeah, you know, with the fact that I was crippled for like two years as a kid, and uh-huh. took up reading 
almost as a way of life. I mean, it, I don't I don't think anybody's seen me walk out the front door, well, any door, <laughs> without a book without a book in my hand in fifty years. Yeah. Of course, nowadays I can walk out with this right here and have three hundred. You know, but that's kind of beside the point. Let me turn that off. That's it. Uh oh, telemarketer. Eh, probably is. Well, he can go telemarket somewhere else. But, you know, it just, today, that so many young people, they, they don't read. They watch movies, they watch videos, they're on Facebook, they're on Snapchat, they're on this, they're on that. You know, all the social media, which has a wonderful place in this universe, I mean, in this world of ours. Because social media has the ability to bring this world together. Unfortunately, human nature keeps it apart. Oh, come on. Go away. <laughs> I should put that back. I should have left that out in the other room. Um, hey, it's important, man. You might need, you might get a phone call. It might be uh, you know Thomas Mazuko. <laughs> <laughs> but books. Not only not only do you learn from books, you know, you, you you can delve more into human nature itself you, you more into the minds of the of the characters and the people and the motives behind them you know it, it opens up so many horizons it makes you think makes you truly use your imagination in a way that video never can uh, this book itself i mean i'm ex-military um i work in law enforcement as a 911 dispatcher which i've been doing for almost 20, well actually over 20 years now Wow. And that, that a lot of that comes to comes to in this book. So it, it is it, there's a lot of personal experience into it, but really it's just my my attempt to get out there something that I think that people can relate to, and I hope that they enjoy just like I always have, you know, something yeah. to make them think a little bit. You know. So you're trying to bring thinking back into the world. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, one in book some at ways, a time. I guess you could say so. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't think that my book is going to create a literary movement that's going to revolutionize, you know, the United States of America or the world. But yeah, I th I think the more people read, the more they do think, and the yeah. more they learn, and the better and the better they communicate. Well, it's an honest to god opportunity to put yourself in another person's shoes. Absolutely. I, I, I have to learn so much about human natures and delve into why would this person, even though I've never experienced this kind of thing, you know, like you were saying about Albert, you know, I mean, the, the man's a basically homicidal assassin. Well, yeah. you know, I've never been a homicidal assassin, but I have to think that why would somebody become that kind of thing? What right. Horrible things have occurred in his past that that brought him to that point, you know, and, and, and it makes you examine not only, not only yourself, but people in general. And, and, you know, and the ability to, to do that is, is very important. I, I think we all need to be able to put ourselves in the other man's shoes, you know, walk that mile, you know, be, before opening our mouths most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes us more gentle, right? It makes us more of a caring, understanding uh, group to where Absolutely. instead of attacking immediately we try to sympathize and understand and get it because i feel like we can actually get somewhere that way yeah you know yeah it, people have to be able to relate to each other you know empathy is a wonderful thing sympathy is good empathy is better i agree <laughs> i i i think that um what you've done with punishment and good deeds is you you have given a voice to so many different character and archetypes that uh, you give us that you give people a chance to understand from so many different perspectives uh, where you can come out of it. And although it's a thriller with a lot of action and some vi very visceral pain, viscerally painful, like things you can come out of it uh, a more understanding person. I think because like for me, Getting to understand the homicidal assassin, who I I would if I didn't know his backstory, I would just simply say, "Well, I hate that guy." But it's something else to say, "Well, I understand that that human being." You know, right. I don't like I, I, I don't like any of the choices, but I understand I understand the human 
there. I, I think you read my blog post where I explained a good bit of not only about growing up in the military, but what yeah. happened to me when I got out and lived in a uh, depressed yeah. neighborhood. Yep. And yeah, and that's, that was an amazing piece too, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it, there, there was a lot of personal stuff in there. I mean, tr true issues, you know, but these things, you know, happen. Yep. They happen to me, you know, and I, and I can, and I can look at this, but having grown up in the military, you know, with my father having been in before I ever went in, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people around the world and, you know, and, I, and it, and it enables you, I guess, to, to understand a little bit more. You know, you, you see all these people from these poor, poor places, and you see people from all walks, all walks of life, religions, and everything else. You know, and 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 I, I think everybody should get the opportunity to experience some some of that, some some of truly being able to delve into other people's cultures and backgrounds. Yeah. You know, we we need to promote understanding. Yeah. And. I, I tried to do that with my characters because it's because I want to say, okay, like I said well, a minute, minute ago, you know, why? Right. Why are they this way? And yeah. if you can do that, if you can if you can do that with the people around you, you know, maybe that guy that, you know, cut you off this morning or, you know, or, or that neighbor next door that you, that, you know, that's such a jerk, you know, you don't know what he's, you don't know what he's going through. Right. You should ask before you yeah. know. Yeah. And isn't that what we're here for is to experience life in in as many different facets as possible? Like it would take it would take more than it would take multiple lifetimes to experience everything that life has to offer. And even then, you know, we probably wouldn't get there. So it's like taking the opportunity to connect with other people is how we can also gain experience the experiences of life that we're missing out on because we just don't we're not able to cram all that into what we're doing. No, I mean, I, even even with reincarnation, I don't think it would it would ever be possible to experience all that life has to offer because yeah. generation to generation, year to year to year, practically, so many things are changing. I know, man. So many things are changing every every day. I mean, look, I mean, I used to I used to marvel at my mother saying, you know, telling me about when she was a child and playing with, you know, the black children and the white children playing together. You know, after school and on the weekends and whatever, then then getting up on the school morning and white kids go to that school, black kids go to that school, and it was just it was just the way it was. But you think that wasn't that long ago? Yeah. And now we have not only in, integration and and we've had a black president and all and and that kind of stuff, but the technology, the technology we have now with the internet and what you and I are doing are, are doing right now is just. It's so phenomenal, and if people would stop using it to scream at each other and use it to talk to each other, my God, what a world this could be! Yeah, it could definitely uh, change everything. I think I think we're headed in that Soapbox. direction. <laughs> What's that? Soapbox. Soapbox. Yes, I know, right? That's okay. I think we're headed in that direction, though, and I think that's the crux of kind of what writing is for you, and and reading is for you. It's a way of connecting to the human experience on so many different levels. And I think people who are well read also see the world that way a little bit more because they're not so caught up in their, their single minded perspective. They, they see from a multi perspective uh, view. It's, it's like when we get that opportunity, cause we're, we're through reading fiction or nonfiction or whatever it is, we get that view. And I think it sounds like for you, that's kind of what writing is. It's, it's taking your experiences, what you've gone through and being able to bleed it out onto the pages so other people can get a whole new perspective on the way you've experienced life and the way you see the human condition. Spot on. I know I am. <laughs> this is this is also this is also psychoanalysis. This is also psychoanalysis 101 by Matt Whiteside. Well, I do I did have some psychology classes in back in college. There you in the go. dim dark ages, of course, they boil down to memorize these fifty thousand, you know, word, word, word list of terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically all it was. Thanks, yeah. Um, so you got, do you have a lot of cool stuff coming up, and uh, with punishment and good deeds. 
And I think I think if when people get their hands on it, <laughs> give it a shot, they'll, they'll see that it, it really is an incredible book. Are you? And I know you're insanely busy. I mean, working you work every night doing the nine one one dispatch. Um, are you? Are you writing something now? Are you working on a new yeah. book? I'm writing a, a second thriller called Killing Keys. I may or may not make it the Killing Keys. You know, the such such redundant word. But yeah, I, I'm I'm. Uh, you just call I'm it a, just Killing Keys. There you go. Nobody you, nobody uses just. <laughs> I went. To, I came to find justice, and that's what I found. Just us. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I'm working, I'm working on a, a thriller. It's not related to the first one. This uh-huh. one is the, the the central characters in this book are a much younger crew. Like I said, it's called Killing Keys, and it's about a a young man. He's caught up in financial straits. Him and his mother, who's a single mother at this point. He's a recent high school graduate, and a lot of his friends are like high school seniors and juniors kind of thing um it, it is it is a thriller it, 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 he gets he gets wrapped up into a robbery or burglary scheme actually a, bur- mm-hmm. a burglary scheme without knowing that the guy that he's caught up in this with is basically a sociopath and aren't uh, they always oh yeah of course <laughs> well, it, it, it is a, it is a thriller there has to be there has to be violence and mayhem and all that the That's the it. action the, the 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 action is not as intense in this book you know it's not one of those let's you know let's kick butt on every page books this one's yeah. this one's a little more human nature oriented i guess you might say yeah uh, you've got this this group of kids and he you know he he gets caught up in this he doesn't know how to get out and then a friend of theirs gets murdered and he's and, and a, another friend another friend of theirs is, is set up as a fall guy Mm. And they're they're caught up in this, and he's between a rock and a hard spot because our main bad guy has evidence that could convict him of some other things that he did on the spur of a moment stupidly. Yeah, you know, and and, the, and the, it's a tangled web. And within this, we also have I had very little true involvement in punching the deeds with the police as police, right? You know, you know the the criminal investigation type of stuff that goes on. There's just a little bit more of that in this one. I actually have three detectives that are that are fairly germane germane to this. You know, they're looking into the string of burglaries, they're looking into the murder, while at the same time these teenage friends are trying to figure out how to get this friend out of jail and and, and hope they have a a pretty good feeling of who the bad guy is, although they don't know for sure yet. They're working on getting proof. And it, mm-hmm. and it's all you know, it's like okay, are they going to get are, are they going to get convicted of this? You know, wrongly, or, or are they going to get killed? You know, it's it, it's a little more, like it's it's a little little slower, but we'll think slightly more in depth, I guess you'd say. Okay, well, how how far along are you in the in the story? Like, when are we expecting it to be published? Uh, where I'm at, I'm figuring. Let's see. I'm at about fifty thousand words. I'll probably finish it. I'd say within the next couple of months. As far as when it's going to be published, I'm hoping I can get traditional publisher. And Lord knows, I don't know what what kind of time frame that'll look at. This yeah. being April, hmm, if I'm lucky, maybe end of the year. I've Are you going to work on the sending out query letters? Yeah. If if none of that works out, then I then I may just do go back to the to the Kindle thing, in which case I would get it out much quicker. Right. But I'm I'm hoping I can get an actual traditional publisher on this one. Yeah. Which is part of the reason I want I'm trying to drum up some of the stuff on the first book. Not only because I believe it is a good book that's worth reading, but yeah. I'm hoping that if I have some sort of a world record with that, that yeah. it would give me an end, I guess to because I found out the first time how hard it is. How truly hard it is to get for an unknown person with little money, you know, financial ability or stability, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> an, unknown poor, an unknown poor guy. <laughs> That's right. To, to get in the end with traditional publishing, it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are some of the things you've learned thus far? Like, I, I feel like you've done a lot in the past three months as opposed to like when the book came out in May. Well, you published it before previously and then you published it with page publishing in may but the past like two or three months you've really 
put in a lot of effort into getting the book marketed. What are some things that you've learned moving forward that you're going to take into uh, Killing Keys? As far as the publicity end of it, you mean? Yeah, because I mean, even even with traditional publishers, unless you're with a big a big house, uh, they they still don't do any marketing really for you. Uh, from what I understand, the marketing is still left up a lot to the author themselves in terms of uh, making sure people see the book and have a following and all that kind of thing. What are some yeah. things that you're going to take into this next next publishing with you? Well, I, I will I will definitely be constantly looking for reviewers. I mean, like magazine review reviewers, um, interviews, stuff like stuff like that. I, you know, get get the word out as as much as you can. But you, you know, basically, what I've learned is you really have to hump it. <laughs> yeah, it it, well, it takes a, a lot a lot of work because you know, nobody if nobody knows it's there, they don't know to look for. Yeah. So. Yeah, you, you you have to con- you have to contact agencies. You have to be proactive. You know, get a, you know, look up look up these magazines that that write that do reviews. Look look up these radio shows that look for local authors or whatever. You know, set up, you know, get out and talk to the to the people at the at the local bookstores or whatever. You know, you, you got to get out there and you got to do it. Uh, what I was told before, you know, was go to writers conferences you know, and do all these things. But the problem is that all those things take money, they take time. So I have to concentrate on things that I can do ma- mainly, you know, online. Yeah. Through the mail and do locally because I have, to, you know, I work 40 hours a week. My wife works 40 hours a week. We got a mortgage to pay, as most of the people out there do. Right. So I, I'm, I'm just learning, A, that it's a tough that it's a tough road to hold but and and you have and yeah but you have you have to do it you, you got to put yourself out there be it on twitter be it on facebook be it on be it on radio be it you know reviews and all that just you just gotta hump it it's like it's like uh there's mine there's diamonds sitting somewhere hidden in mines that nobody knows about they're so valuable but it's like we have to go out there and we have to dig that crap up and and then take it and put it in front of somebody who's willing to pay pay its worth. And well, we don't realize how much work it's going to take to actually find them in the first place, you know? Well, your, your statement about the diamonds being hidden under has never been more true than it is right now today. Yeah. Um, like we were saying about Kindle, um, Kindle publishing and stuff like that. Online publishing, while it has the potential to be a true wonder, especially for people like you and me who don't have a lot of funds available, don't have a lot of connections and, you know, and et cetera, you know, anybody, anybody can literally publish anything. Yeah. The problem with that is that you get a, such a huge mound of mediocre to poor stuff out there that, I can't, I won't say should not be published because anybody should publish anything they 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 felt that they need to write and they need to put out there. But there's such a humongous hill of stuff out there right now. Yeah, that it is those those diamonds, those rare diamonds are are lost under this pile of coal. Yeah, and. Yeah, you, 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 you gotta you gotta dig you gotta dig it out and you gotta put it up there and say here it is. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it, we are literally in a crowd. Everyone's raising their hand, um, and none of our arms are longer than anybody else's. <laughs> so we're all the same. We're all the same height. We're all the same height, right? So like we got to do something crazy um, to get ourselves out there. And I think that's that's one of the most important things is like trying to figure out who you are yeah. as an author what you yeah. what your mission is i'm still not sure who i am as an uh, you know or I, as a I, person I, I, <laughs> yeah, absolutely as as a person i want to be i want to be that guy that people can turn to and say hey you know i i, I need some help and i'm there yeah. but as far as, as as an author thing i still kind of flounder a little bit you know i i write kids stories I write some young adult stuff. I write some. I write some sci-fi. I write yeah. poetry. You know, I write 
Yeah, as you saw, I write com- I write some comedy skits. I I yeah, even write some some, some uh, what's that crap weird owl does the song parodies. <laughs> song parodies, heck yeah. <laughs> but but same, but when it comes to writing a novel, uh, for whatever reason, although I, I try to get the few chuckles in there, it tends to come out more serious. So I guess thriller it's going to be because I suck at mystery. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little you know, it's, it's hard to life. hide the. It's it's hard to like to promise something without giving it away. Like that's what writing a mystery is. It's like the promise of something to come. I'm always just like, well, here's the thing. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> right. right. You know, while, while the characters in the book may be may be trying to figure out what's going on, but my my readers are pretty well aware of what's going on. Right. But but that's why I write it as a thriller because I you know I I try to make it character driven. And act, characters and action and just you know you, you know this this is what the heck's going on and you, and you know and make you want to follow it through to see what's going on right even though you know who the bad guy is you know who the good guys are you know it's not a question of who done it and the big reveal at the end you know with you know it was the butler yeah <laughs> but yeah you get to see so, you get to follow the trail because it's fun because you're having a yes. good time following the trail, not because you want to see what what's at the end of the trail necessarily, even though there's some of that, but it's more of, I'm having a great time on this journey. Let's keep going. <laughs> well, it's, it, right. I mean, fo- following the trail and following the characters and the action, is, you know, there's, there's always the question of how are they going to resolve this? How are they going to get out of this? You know, yeah. And, what, and, and what's, gonna, what's going to happen at the end, even if it's not a question of who done it. So, right. Yeah, I wrote a, a short story called um, "A Singular Echo" a while back. It was E C H O in capital in capitals, which stood for Earth Cloned Human Organism, hmm. and that's that's kind of a, a campy little sci-fi sci-fi story about this young man who stumbles on this thing where a guy, a gentleman who was basically cloning people. And, uh-huh. sending, and shipping the clones off as, as you know, to be slave labor on an alien planet through a wormhole thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that that's actually one of my favorite little stories, and, and it's only about forty pages long. But I, but I truly, continually thought about taking that and expanding that into a young adult sci-fi novel because I mean, you can see what's going to happen. There. I mean, you already you already know what's going to happen there. Of course, the kid gets shipped off and play, and the clone ends up here. Yeah. Right. So, but but there's a lot there's a lot of potential there if if, if I could expand that because I'm at, here you have the clone has no memory. Okay. He doesn't know that he's not the original person. Right. So here he is thinking he's just a victim of amnesia, you know. And there, so you know, so what happens with him and 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 the family and the girlfriend and the friends and school? Meanwhile, you've got the original the, the the real kid. Is off over here in the slave labor camp on an in, on an alien planet, and how does you know? And he's slowly regaining his faculties, and and this you know how is he gonna escape and and come back? Yeah. And then what then what happens when they get when he gets he comes back here and he comes face to face with his alternate self with aliens on his trail? I, I know that's a, that's quite a, that's that sounds quite a, great, but, but but it's something that it's been in the back of my mind for so long. Yes. Yeah. How long ago did you write that? Uh, that story I actually wrote, oh, Lord, I don't know, five or six years ago, I guess. That sounds cool. You can look it up on uh, Amazon. <laughs> Is <laughs> Oh, it's published. You Because you have multiple, you have a lot of, you have other published books, too. I mean, you've written a ton of stuff. Yeah, Mo- Mostly just short stuff. I, only the one novel is out there. They're, they're right. Like, but I've got a couple of basically children's stories. I've got that that one there, which is kind of a young adult, you know, little sci-fi sci-fi thing. Uh, I've got a little bit of erotica actually, and my thriller novel, and the one I'm That's working. That's the way on. to go, right there. It's <laughs> the way to go. I'm going to be a children's <laughs> author. I'm also going to write erotica. <laughs> yeah, maybe I might want to come up with a couple of pseudonyms. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, hey. Did you know the guy? The guy that wrote, you know, Happy Hollisters also wrote the, ha- you know, Call Me Madam. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not. What's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it's it's great though because you have a varied imagination and your creativity doesn't isn't limited to one genre which is fantastic i would classify you as a a writer a pure like you just love creating stories and that's a storyteller you know and in whatever medium it, it it shows itself you're a storyteller and that's that's really cool because you can be funny you can be serious you can be silly you can be erotic you can be you know <laughs> child childlike whatever it is sci-fi fantasy you just put it out there and that's that's the beauty that's the beauty of being able to write like that because you never you're never at a lack i feel like for content you can always get get something going have have a project to work on and eventually something will stick and obviously thrillers is something that i feel like that's your wheelhouse when it comes to writing novels yeah it, it probably is <laughs> but well you I, spent I, I mean you've like you've spent most of your life in that kind of mindset and environment i mean doing 911 dispatch and then being in the military there's kind of that you know it's just yeah. kind of programmed i think yeah that, that, that that's definitely true because i mean every day i'm i'm dealing with that kind that kind of thing and people at their best people at their worst right you know and and just the the crap that life throws at you yeah you know, even even if it's not being thrown directly at me you know i'm i'm, I'm the middleman and i'm fielding this yeah you know, you know five nights a week or more right so yeah i i guess so but well, I mean, you got a lot of cool stuff going on. I'm really excited for you for all the stuff coming up in the future. Uh, I can't wait for the the radio interview, um, the book signing, all that great stuff. Punishment and Good Deeds is a fantastic read. If you haven't already, make sure you go on Amazon. Uh, you can also go to Barnes and Noble online and order it. They'll deliver it to the store or uh, anywhere. Basically, books are sold. You can you can get the ebook on every platform. Correct. Well, yeah, Nook, Kindle, um, Kindle. I know you can get you can Google get it Play and iTunes. Yeah, so so pretty much every every platform. Um, I, I know I know this book is is fantastic because I read it myself. <laughs> so I'm not just saying that. So um, do so, I. Yeah, <laughs> so do you. About twenty times by the time it was done. <laughs> Jeez Louise, <laughs> that's a lot. So. Everyone go out and make sure you go check it out. You your website too is uh it's PB Batch Patch, sorry. Yeah, PB Patch P A T C H uh dot wixsite dot com slash PB Patch. Right. And, and that's where they can find your blog. They can find your yeah. blog, poetry, book, yeah. and yeah. then you'll have your events and stuff on there too, right? Uh actually I do need to go on there and post a thing about the uh, about the radio interview and the and the signing but yeah it, it's got all that stuff he's got the you know basic home page this is me links to the books and like i said the blog has a little bit of everything it's got some of my comedy some of my poetry some of some of my just rambling nonsense which is probably about two-thirds of what i do <laughs> which is mostly comedy <laughs> a few video links you know including including your review of of punishment and good deeds is linked on there <laughs> yeah and you yeah, reviewed you were, you reviewed my book too and did a video of it. Yes, Trent Foster on the Council of Ten. That was a lot of fun. With that, the, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I know. It was fun. I appreciate it, Andrew. Thanks so much for coming on again, man. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I'm so glad that we we connected and that we're friends. Um, writing writing is something that can connect us definitely. And I'm so glad that we're we're able to use this medium and the platform of Twitter and everything to connect to one another because it's it's been it's been amazing getting to know you, man. Honestly, it has. I feel the same, and I, I mean, I, I've watched I've watched you go on a go on a journey that that I truly believe few people really could. I mean, I, I know a little bit of your back history with some of the issues that you've had in the past, and you're overcoming those, but how far have you come in just the short time I've known you, man? Man, kudos. You are phenomenal, dude. You are Thank phenomenal. you. Man. Thank you. Complete accident. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes accidents are the best way. That's right. Even a, a 
What is it? Every dog has his day. I've just had it. I've had a good nine months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every dog has his day, and a cat plots revenge. That's true. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, no revenge plots in our future. But I'll uh, I'll put links to all your information in the description of the video. Um, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Always is. <laughs>